Africa Business News, proudly sponsored by EY. Africa, it is huge, it is diverse, and its business landscape, fascinating and dynamic. And that's our business here on your favorite weekly African business stop in Nairobi. Bonnie Tunya brings us the latest from East Africa. Esther Aoni in Lagos gives us news from West Africa. And with me in the Johannesburg studio is Tumiso Greater. My name is Victor Homoeswana and this is Africa Business News. Mambo Boni, another exciting week has risen in East Africa. A high profile visitor talking all sorts of business from philanthropy to how African leaders can get Africa working. I'm talking, of course, about the 41st president of the U.S., Bill Clinton. What was he doing in Kenya? Right, Victor. The former U.S. president, Bill Clinton, just completed a three-day visit to Kenya, accompanied, of course, by his daughter, Chelsea. And uh, this trip was particularly to assess the project by the Clinton Foundation. You see, the Clinton staff and team arrived uh, Friday morning from Tanzania and visited the Mbagadi District Hospital where his uh, Clinton Health Foundation is supporting uh, a number of programs there. Now, he assessed the oral rehydration solution program that is supported by the Clinton Health Access Initiative, popularly known as CHAI, which has built a children's ward um, in the health institution. Now, the program supports uh, the government to increase uh, the coverage of uh, appropriate diarrhea treatment and zinc uptake to up to 65% uh, of children below the age of five. Mobile money is something that has changed the African business landscape for good and there's obviously no stopping the migration of this innovation to loans as Partly's lines up its systems to provide credit through cell phones. When will that be and how does one do credit scoring on a mobile phone, Bernie? Well, Victor, the conversation about mobile money transfer, especially in the East African space, is one that is treated with a lot of excitement, seeing as the level of uh, impact it has had on the lives of people. And Barclays is the latest one in this space. You see, Barclays uh, may be the next bank to leverage on the mobile phone-based uh, uh, lending after the Commercial Bank of Africa and the Commercial Bank, as well as Equity Bank, which have all upgraded to the platform in a bit to expand their interest income and uh, move reliance on that. Now, the managing director, Jeremy Owori, uh, uh, in recent weeks has mentioned that Buckles is studying uh, how the rivals will manage the risk to know how the model in, in the mobile money transfer system actually works. Now, mobile phone lending remains quite a complicated area for the banks especially as they have to rely on individual behavioral scorecards like trying to link a person's credit worthiness by how they consume airtime or checking with the Credit Reference Bureau on their repayment behavior. Now, Equity Bank became the first bank to offer the service with the launch of MCASHO product in 2010. CBA and uh, KCB joined the free later with uh, Mshuari and KCB M-Pesa respectively, allowing subscribers to borrow between 50 shillings and a million shillings, Victor. And uh, uh, the concern right now is not just who is rolling out and how fast they're doing, but will this impact their customers and are customers actually benefiting from this? But really, as they say and as uh, the CEO has been saying, this is uh, tipped to be a game changer for the banking space in East Africa. Is there anything a mobile phone can do? I admire Uganda for insisting on the refinery of their crude oil instead of rushing to drill and export it. It looks like East Africa will wait a lot longer though for this refinery to take off. Well, Victor, you see, I share the admiration because Uganda has uh, sort of made very important announcements of late in regards to uh, their going after hydrocarbons and uh, just playing in the whole oil production uh, space, uh, Victor. And Uganda's planned uh, crude oil refinery will take five years to complete. A representative of the firm that won the bid to build this multi-billion 60,000 barrels per day facility has revealed that this will take just about over five years. And uh, they're expecting it to 
really change the, the map in regards to how oil and hydrocarbons are traded, especially in the East African regions. Victor, you may be aware that Kenya had um, a, a, a refinery in uh, Mombasa for a long time that has since been uh, transformed into uh, a storage facility because it cannot keep up in terms of the recent te technology as well as uh, 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 the quality of the product that is coming out. And so obviously this will mean a lot for Uganda uh, in this project but that is led by the South Korean firm SK Group, uh, which is, uh, won uh, the tender worth just about 2.5 billion US dollars, Victor. Okay, thank you, Bonitunio, coming to us from Nairobi, Kenya. Our next stretch is to Misho Greater, joining us to talk about some of the big stories coming out of Southern Africa. We're still on Africa Business News and in our Johannesburg studio, I'm with Tumisho Great. A May Day has come and gone as the Johannesburg Stock Exchange was pulled down by the resource stocks tracking softer global commodity prices. But Tumisho is going to give us her assessment of the Southern African Development Community, that's SADC, and its industrialization summit which took place last week. Some people, Tumisho, call in this industrialization in reverse. Give us your sense of what took place at the summit and whether SADC is headed in the right direction. Mm. Oh, thanks, Victor. I'm not sure uh, if it is industrialization in reverse. I can tell you, as you said rightfully, that it did take place uh, last week on the 29th. Uh, we did have the static heads of state. Yeah. Uh, they got together as well as their representatives. Now, uh, Robert Mugabe, the president of Zimbabwe, opened up the summit. And what he did say is he did applaud the static leaders for their commitment uh, to industrialization and making sure that we can foster this. Uh, one of the things that did come out from there, Victor, is the static industrialization strategy. Yes. And in order to get this right, there are three uh, pillars that the, this particular policy has been anchored on. So firstly, it is industrialization. Uh, secondly, we're talking about competitiveness and regional integration being the third pillar. Mm -hmm. Now, on the issue of competitiveness, uh, they did underscore that infrastructure is important. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know about this, but the funding mechanisms and appropriate funding mechanisms uh, is one thing that still needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Now, on the issue of regional integration, uh, there was progress progress that was uh, spoken about when it comes to uh, the ESC, uh, COMESA and the SADC uh, tripartite oh, yes. and also uh, in, in uh, June uh, this year we are set to see the launch of the uh, tripartite free trade area. Uh, so that is something we'll definitely be looking uh, forward to. Just on another note though, uh, other things that did take place there, uh, President Jacob Zuma of South Africa of course, uh, he was there. He did uh, brief the summit on the recent ongoings of the xenophobic attacks. He said there are condemning this and also spoke about the measures that they are currently putting in place. But do you, do you believe that we are heading in the right direction, considering that the visa regime to start with is still so skewed in favor of South Africa? I'm going to go out on the limb here, Victor. There's always so much negativity that has been said yeah. around uh, Africa and whether or not we are able to implement these plans that we have in place. Mm -hmm. They are having summits such as these. They do understand what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I think June might be a test to see the launch of the, of the tripartite free trade area. Uh, so if uh, we are still going to be seeing some teething problems, hopefully uh, we will be able to see the different uh, member countries come together and, and work towards uh, some sort of development uh, going forward. Better get our teething problems out of the way because the rest of the world is taking advantage of SADC. But thank you very much. Next up, Esther Aoni is in Lagos to chat to us about West Africa. <music> Esther, Nigeria never disappoints when it comes to business headlines. The Dangote Empire growing to include an oil refinery at Lekki, demonstrating once again that Africa's wealthiest man is not slowing down anytime soon. However, updates on the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the Petroleum Minister, and how much money is exactly missing from the state-owned enterprise. Well, Victor, the Petroleum Minister continues to insist there is no missing 20 billion U.S. dollars. Now, if you recall, the forensic audit of PricewaterhouseCoopers concluded that the NNPC should refund to the government a minimum of 1.48 billion U.S. dollars of missing oil funds. Well, let me also point out that the report gave no strong and independent opinion of its findings, despite saying the investigation was carried out using forensic techniques. Now, it instead listed a series of potential factors that could render its findings in implausible, saying it had no access to full accounts of some relevant agencies like the MPDC, that's the upstream petroleum industry subsidiary of the NMPC. Now, the firm said where it lacked data, it turned to details of earlier investigations carried out by the Nigerian Senate, which all but cleared the NMPC and the Petroleum Ministry of any wrongdoing. 
in another neighboring West African country or other neighboring countries, Liberia to be exact, the U.S. has decommissioned the Ebola Center, and one of the country's major long-time investors, Arsenal Mittal, is now even more bullish about the country. You're absolutely right, Victor. Now, this is good news for Liberia, which is just a few days away from being declared Ebola-free. Now, the country has had no new cases in the past five weeks and could be declared Ebola-free on May the 9th. Well, until then, the country is not out of the woods yet. But so far, the virus has claimed about 10,892 lives since March of 2014. But on a good note, on a lighter note, ArcelorMittal continues to support Liberia in its development initiatives. Recall that the company signed a contract in 2005 with the Liberian government in which it promised to be a partner in Liberia's growth and development. Now, since then, ArcelorMittal Liberia, <coughs> Liberia has not wavered on this promise often going beyond the mineral development agreement, that's the MDA, even during the most challenging conditions. Now, according to the company, it remains committed to the construction of key projects like the Ganta Yekepa Highway, in which work has begun as scheduled, and it says it will continue as promised. Thank you, Esther Oni, out of Lagos, Nigeria. That ushers this week's trivia, and we also get to hear about the favorite stocks of Esther and Bonnie. Stay with Africa Business News. If I were to invest 10,000 US dollars at this moment, which share would you recommend? Starting with you, Bonitonia. Well, Victor, this time around, it will be the banking sector, cooperative bank to be specific. This, uh, with a share price of 20 to 25, going up just about 4%. And recently, they hired McKinsey to sort of put things in, in shape. So, I mean, this is a bank that, uh, in my view, has a future. All right, banking again. What's new out of East Africa? How about Lagos, Esther? Now, Victor, I've always been a big fan of the banks, but this time around, I think I'm going to go with the insurance sector, continental reinsurance to be exact. Now, things are looking up for, for the insurance sector, uh, and the analysts uh, are quite optimistic about changes that they're expecting this year, particularly on the investment front. A lot of investment is expected to come into the sector this year, and of course, we've seen better regulation uh, within the sector. So uh, I'm keeping my eye on that stock, and I, I'm confident that it will do well. All right, insurance and banking. Of course, our trivia question for this week, May 5th, I ask you, Bonnie and Esther, is called Petra's Victory Day to mark the ending of the occupation of a certain African country by the Italians. Which country is this? If you've mentioned Italians, that has to be Ethiopia. That's right. The brass bands are certainly still blowing loud and proud in the capital city of Addis and every other part of the original home of coffee, Ethiopia, to commemorate the grand entrance by Emperor Haile Selassie into Addis Ababa on this day back in 1941. The emperor, it said, chose the exact date, May the 5th, because the Italians had entered the city on the same date to disrupt Ethiopia's sovereignty five years earlier. This day honors those who fought to resist the occupation in the resistance movement between 1935 and 1941. Besides the performance by the military brass bands to mark the festivities, a wreath is laid before the city's monuments in honor of the victorious Ethiopians' military. So, while not forgetting the people of Namibia who celebrate Kasinga Day on May the 4th, we wish the people of Ethiopia everywhere in the world a happy Patriots Victory Day. We're back with you next week with more Africa Business News. We thank Esther Aoni out of Lagos, Bonnie Tuna in Nairobi, and Elliot Dumiso Greater here in Johannesburg. Stay tuned to CNBC Africa until next week. Hi, Kabe.